I am very, very excited about this video that you're going to be watching right now. This is actually a live audit call for a YouTube channel that is basically starting almost from zero. The goal is that we are going to be trying to attract inbound clients, inbound leads for my friend's business. His name is Farouk and his business is about providing animated studio quality videos for B2B SaaS companies. So if you are someone that is also looking to generate more inbound clients and inbound leads for your high ticket services, high ticket offers. I promise you that this video is going to be very, very valuable to you. In all of the video, we're going to be reviewing a specific strategies, tactics, how to optimize your YouTube channel overall, how to think about the whole YouTube marketing organic approach when it comes to the strategy. So again, generate more email clients, grow your revenue, grow your profit, all just using your YouTube channel. Having said that, stay with me for the next few minutes. This will be a very, very valuable video. Let's begin. So anyway, Farouk, like when it comes to your channel, I would love to first ask you like a couple of questions. First of all, how will you define your specific ICP? Who is the type of people that you are trying to serve? SaaS companies in general, more specifically B2B SaaS companies. A bit, if you want to say early stage. So it could be usually ideally either Series A, Series B, if you want to say funded uh, companies or bootstrapped and just doing well in general. Generating anywhere between 20 to 50K and above per month in MRR. That would be sort of that, like the ICP. Uh, based in the US ideally, but we've worked with companies all around the world. That's sort of like a bit like companies that at least, I think that's another thing that's important is like companies that also like actually are sort of investing into marketing too. So that's something that's really important that they actually use, they leverage their website, if you want to say, or they leverage like ads to actually generate leads. That's usually where our videos are being placed. Makes sense. What is your specific offer? Animated videos for SaaS companies. So we basically help you increase your conversions by leveraging the power of animated videos. A lot of times people will either run, have a landing page or website with no video on there. So it becomes very hard to sort of understand what the product is at a glimpse. And if you're sort of quickly navigating through the web and you're looking for like a specific product and you're trying to compare between different com competitors, it's going to be hard to stand out if you don't have a video and other like important marketing assets. So we help you create that in a sense so that you can actually stand out so that you can explain your product. That could be a bit complicated in a more easy, simple manner. And if you're running ads as well, like it's a way to sort of like increase the conversions by getting more clicks and attention since videos tend to convert better than static ads with static images, basically. It makes sense. So will you say it's like primarily animated videos for SaaS companies, either a animated videos for like ad creatives or specifically like BSLs, explainer videos for their websites? 100%. That's, that's typically what we focus. Awesome. When it comes to the ICP, again, our SaaS companies that are doing in monthly record revenue MRR between 50 to 20K per month, they are looking already for like expanding their marketing efforts. And that's where you come in. That's basically like the ICP that you have right now. Yes. Absolutely. Makes sense. Right now, Farouk, are you doing like any other organic efforts for generating leads? Yeah, Twitter. Twitter is actually it's been reliable getting us inbound leads. So that's been like the number one focus for inbound. It's Twitter kind of with content. We do a bit of LinkedIn too, uh, but the results have been mainly uh, from Twitter, like in terms of like clients that we've been able to sign through organic. Oh, all right. So like inbound clients right now coming from Twitter. When it comes to like your YouTube channel, what is kind of like your plans? What are you trying to achieve? What is your strategy, your goal? Yeah, I'm definitely trying to generate leads through YouTube. I heard that this is sort of like a big area where a lot of a lot of agencies have been able to sort of like leverage. And I think what's important to note about video in general is sort of like once you actually have those videos up there, like you could have a video that was posted like six months, 12 months ago, but like it could still have a great impact similar to how a blog post and SEO would would sort of have that impact. Uh, so yeah, I'm sort of trying to like leverage the power of video and have those like evergreen content posted out there so that I could sort of like be able to generate some leads from from YouTube. Yeah, I totally agree. And honestly, bro, like I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for you. I don't think that in your specific niche for your specific offer, there's like much competition. So that's great for you. Also, 100%. Maybe the difference like between YouTube and any other social media platform is that exactly as you mentioned, because of like the SEO nature and the evergreen nature of their YouTube videos and YouTube platform, each video that you post is going to continue to deliver results and quality traffic over the long term. Even like sometimes what we have seen with some clients per book, 
is that, for example, we post a video and six months after, like they start to pick up. I have like a breakthrough in, in terms of like the graph of views that they start to get six months after the video has been posted. That is not kind of like a behavior that you see happening on any other social media platform. So that's precisely when YouTube may be coming and it's like a very powerful form of marketing. Besides that, do you have like any ideas on the type of content that you want to create, that you are trying to create? What are kind of your thoughts on that? Been, yeah. If you notice with like all the shorts that we've been posting, it's just been mainly like seller content. So I had a buddy of mine like sort of work on this with me where just kind of, he asked me just some random questions about sort of agencies in general, sort of been answering that. But mainly just been doing that just so I could start like filling in content the truth is i'm still trying to figure it out that's sort of like why we're having this call to begin with is so sort of, i'm trying to figure out what approach to take like i have the knowledge i have the sort of idea uh i'm not afraid to be on camera i've actually been posting a lot of videos on twitter actually and it's, i've been seeing results from that surprisingly like videos on twitter so i'm like all right i have everything i need i just need the, the strategy if you want to say to actually know how to how to target my ICP on YouTube with videos and sort of what approach to take. And if I have that, I feel like I could definitely see some results. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And that's what I would love to get into. So first of all, also going back like to your offer, here's like your website, right? You already have like your funnel. I'm seeing that like it is basically an appointment booking funnel. So you have like your process, uh, some of the results, amazing results that you have gotten for your clients, your main offer. And at the end, you have like your appointment booking funnel. As you just saw, we were basically just trying to better understand the business of Farouk, understand what is specifically his ICP, what are his challenges, to better diagnose his situation and propose a roadmap, a blueprint that you will be able to follow along to. So having said that, now we are going to be getting into the channel foundations, specifically what are the channel foundations and the way that he needs to structure his YouTube channel if he wants to generate more leads, as well as a strategy because let me tell you this the channels that generate the best results channels that are a predictable and consistent revenue source for businesses are by design they are structured in a specific way it's not like a random process and that specific way is precisely what we will be reviewing shortly so let's review this together in the next few minutes so awesome what i would love to do is a few things First of all, like usually what I recommend is that we have, there are two parts of like the overall strategy. We have first like the channel foundations that are specifically things that we are going to be optimizing on your channel to make sure that every single person that enters into your content ecosystem is going to be fully aware about your offer, who you are, how can you help them? Uh, you're going to be building that trust immediately, all of that. Besides the channel foundations, we also have the strategy per se. That is just like the type of content that we are going to be creating, the type of topics that we are going to be covering, the type of like structure of your scripts, all of that. So these are like the two different areas that we will focus on. The first one that I would love to get into is our day like channel foundations. So by the way, Farouk, if you may have like any questions throughout like this, just definitely let me know. Sometimes I can speak a little bit fast, but just let me know, my man, happy to help. First of all, and I will even pull up like my channel for you to have like context on sort some of these things. So let's start like with the basics. The first thing that I wanted to mention is regarding like the homepage section. The way that I like to approach YouTube is basically as if it was your own website, right? You know that there are certain structure that we need to follow when it comes to your website. Same applies for YouTube. First thing is the banner. The banner is going to be super important for you to immediately communicate to your ICP to that a target audience. What is your offer about? How can you help them? Or like a one-liner that is like your positioning phrase. What makes you different from your competition? So to exemplify this, here's what we have like us or one-liner for our agency. Like don't forget you to marketing services. What is like our positioning phrase? Views don't equal sales. That's kind of like our philosophy. If you have something like that in your company, I will encourage you to add it to the banner. Do you happen to have like something al along those lines at this moment? Yeah, I mean, the first thing that popped to mind, if it was like similar to what you're doing here, is sort of like increased conversions using animated videos, right? That's sort of what we've been leading. That'll be perfect. Honestly, that'll be perfect. Like, that's kind of like your main offer. So it could be uh, like a one-liner, a positioning phrase. It could be also like you're just stating like kind of your offer. But bottom line is that the idea is that every single person that just enters your content ecosystem 
immediately is going to be able to know what is your channel about and what is your offer about. You are kind of like bringing certain type of awareness to your services. So that's the first thing. Second thing, it comes to the actual name of the of the channel. This is especially true to channels that are just starting out on YouTube. And the reason is that YouTube up until now have zero context on like, what is your channel about? What is your specific audience? You're just starting to post content. So we need to provide that context on who are you trying to reach with your YouTube channel. A suggestion that I always do is to identify what is like a main target keyword within your niche. And I actually kind of research a few ideas that I'll suggest to you in a bit and add it to your name. So you can see here, my name, Juan Alzate, and then YouTube marketing, because that is a target keyword in my niche. What does it mean like a target keyword? It's basically a keyword that is not only relevant to my specific target audience or to your specific target audience, but it's also searchable and discoverable for them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It's funny thing is I do that on Twitter, so, so that's great. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that'll be my recommendation as well. Now, we move on to the about me section. You can see that we have the banner, then we have like the actual name, then we have this like first line of like kind of a description that in my case, it says helping entrepreneurs sell more of their high ticket offers on autopilot. If we click here, it takes us to the about me section. So this is the next section that we will be reviewing on your channel, the about me section. Here, this is going to be extremely important for you to provide context again to your audience on what is it that you do, bringing attention to like your offer or your services. And even more importantly, also, I'll explain more into this, but try to raise like that level of certainty or trust that your audience has with you. So you'll do that like through your copy. Here's an example as well, description. So I have like, I'm providing context of who I am, what is my company about, what are the services that I provide, I like the positioning phrase, then I go into a little bit of like social proof. So uh, the type of results that we are getting, the number of clients that we have worked with, how many years in the industry, all of that stuff. More things for social proof. That's basically my recommendation for the about me section. Providing context again about your offer, social proof, all of that. Now, there's something extremely important to have in mind, and is that look that in this about me section, the first lines of the description is actually kind of like an offer, kind of something that identifies who is your audience. So in my case, entrepreneurs, what is it that I'm doing? That in my case is sell more of high ticket offers on autopilot and how I am doing it. Like what is that unique mechanism? In this case, don't forget you to marketing services. So I'll probably encourage you to have something like that as well because this first line of the about me section is the line that everyone on the homepage section is going to be able to read as a preview. If you can see there, does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. What is something that you think you could add to that section, Baruch? You know, I feel like something that's helped me a lot with build trust because I've been doing uh, some cold outbound, like with cold email. Something that helps build a lot of trust is when I talk about my experience, not only as sort of like running a design agency, but sort of how I've been helped SaaS companies in general, like get results through like marketing initiatives. Because as I mentioned before this call, like I was mentioning, like I, I do marketing for SaaS. That's like my main offer, like the old dry desert when animated videos, that's sort of like my secondary offer that I'm trying to like launch, but I have more experience in the industry. So I feel like I can talk a bit about that to give me a bit more social proof and then talk about the results we've been able to get for clients with animated. A hundred percent. I think that will be definitely a great type of information to add because at the end of the day, what we want to do like with our personal brands, especially like on YouTube or in any platform, to be honest, is just to show that, as Daniel always says, right? It's uh, all about not only doing a great offer, but also providing the, like that indisputable evidence that you are the expert or the authority on that niche so that people can trust you and actually go ahead and move forward with your services, want to learn more about them. So that is something important as well, that like first line, then of course, like the links in the about me section as well. Just making sure that you are featuring like your website, in this case, like right dessert, putting it here in the links for the about me section. Uh, moving away from that, it's going to be important for you to have broader like a homepage trailer. My recommendation for a homepage trailer is just keep it short, something like under two minutes could be, in which you provide context on, again, who you are, a little bit about of your background story, a little bit about your company, very briefly, maybe a little bit of social proof, and at the end, a clear call to action either to visit your website that is the appointment booking funnel or to a lead magnet in case that you already have lead magnets. And we'll get into those lead magnets and sales assets in, in a little bit because I think it's a very important part of the whole marketing strategy when it comes to YouTube. Right now, do you have like any sales assets in other social media platforms that are working for you well right now? Definitely something we're working on right now a lot. 
and we've especially like with our VSL since now we got some really good like great case studies like the whole idea is to actually like work on not only like the VSLs but sort of sales assets related to getting clients results so definitely I could see how we could leverage that in the introduction but like you already have some sales assets built no currently currently all working so basically what I've been doing on Twitter a lot has just been sort of like raw videos if you want to say sort of like just talking about covering a specific topic which does still work because it does display like authority but yeah definitely need to still like have some very specific tailored sales assets and I was thinking sort of of having I mean some of the videos that I wanted to create on YouTube were sort of like the whole idea was to sort of leverage them as sales assets to begin mm, makes sense yeah and totally it kind of like becomes like a cycle you can use like the youtube videos as sales assets for twitter and you can use certain documents and things from twitter for your youtube channel also now that you mentioned that you have already certain following on twitter and you have been like posting videos that have resonated with your market something that you could do is that the best performing videos on twitter create like expanded versions of that for youtube that usually will work as well so that's yeah. recommendation good idea yeah. besides that so we have like the homepage trailer we have like the the thing that we just talked about the twitter i'll get a little bit more into the sales assets and lead magnets for youtube and i'll explain a little bit on the youtube funnel that i will probably suggest to you for your strategy but let's continue for now with the channel foundations so now we have already the banner messaging the youtube channel name the about me section uh and the first line of that about me section the homepage trailer then we go into the homepage sections. These are like, again, just like the boring stuff, the basic stuff, like kind of simple. But at the end of the day, these are the foundations that will allow you to have like a powerful strategy, right? Everything complements at the end of the day. And that determines over the long term, like the type of results that you experience. So for the sections right now, you have like a short section and a video section. So multiple recommendations when you get actually like into the YouTube studio, let's actually, let's actually do it with you right now. So you can see. So when you get actually into the YouTube studio in customization, channel customization is where you see like these feature sections, these feature sections that you are seeing in my case, there are these two. YouTube marketing and YouTube management, and then looking for more content. And they have featured my like YouTube channel of the agency specifically. These are, these two are playlists. So you can add just here uh, in the feature section, certain playlists, you click um, in a single playlist and you select the playlist that you want to feature it on your homepage. So I'll encourage you to do that, especially because look that the name of the playlist is not just like a a name for a uh, organization purposes, but it's also a name for SEO purposes. You can see YouTube marketing again, in my case, is a target keyword for my niche. YouTube management is a target keyword for my niche. So based on the target keywords on your particular niche that we could do a little exercise in BitIQ uh, in a bit, but we could see what are like certain target keywords that make sense from you and name certain playlists with those target keywords and then putting them a single channel playlist here in the homepage section. So that's also something important for the channel foundations. By the way, to give you maybe some ideas, what do you think Farouk is like a term that identifies your specific ICP? That's, I think that's also been like what I'm curious about. So there's a bunch of them on Twitter. What works is SaaS videos, but in general, people either describe them as SaaS videos, animated videos, or explainer videos. Makes sense. So let's see. So videos, uh, that's kind of not my preference to like a low search volume and competition too high. So here's my recommendation. This is a tool, BitIQ. You can use BitIQ to body and or tools like that, uh, just for reference. When it comes to, and maybe we are already getting a little bit into like the actual strategy side of things, but let's touch briefly on this. Even though your specific like service are SaaS videos and all of that, it's very likely that people that have like a SaaS company are not going to be looking specifically for that on YouTube. Because realistically speaking, if they are just thinking about your service, they probably just type on Google and they are just looking to buy immediately. Are like now buyers the ones that are going to a specifically search for SaaS videos. Now, based on this, what we have to do is to find like what are those keywords that are still relevant to our target audience that have high search volume, low competition, and that even though might not be about the like your specific service, you know that the type of content that you're creating is still attracting that ICP that you want. 
because over the long term, when they think about actually creating a BSL and an animated video, they are going to be thinking about you. You're going to be top of mind for them. Based on that, what are some examples of content video topics that you could record? Actually, up here, like a few, you could create something like how to create a high converting video ad. This is more like what we call a nurturing type of video that are like a, you're educating your audience. It's a how to video into how to do something very specific. And if someone like, let's say, from the SaaS world is looking to create like a high converting ad and you explain them like the whole process and in that script structure that you have, you also mention like subtly mention that you have like this other service in which you pr provide like the ad creatives that you provide like the whole video is very likely like they will be moving forward in the future if they need a service like yours, right? Because you are educating them, you're nurturing them. So that's an example of a big idea that you could try. Other ideas that you could try, how to create high converting like video B like BSLs. It's an idea. You could do also like case studies, but from big companies. So let's say that your niche is also interested, that you think that is interested also on branding or on like video marketing. You could do a case study on uh, the video marketing strategy from Apple, the video marketing strategy from Google and big companies like that. Because chances are that your people in your specific ICP are going to be interested in topics like that. And you're just proving your expertise, talking about something that is appealing to them, and again, bringing awareness to your offer. That's like the bottom line. Something that we like to say is that in certain way or form, each YouTube video that you post is its own BSL. So that is something to have in mind as well. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions? It does. I guess to me, the real question is, because what you just mentioned makes a lot of sense. I guess the question is, how do you approach like knowing which questions? So let's say I have like a bunch of these questions that my uh, ICP would potentially be looking for. How do I know that this is a topic worth covering? Like, let's say, for example, you mentioned how to create high converting video ads. I mean, intuitively, it makes sense that it's a topic that would be popular, but how do I actually make sure before I invest into actually creating the video? That is a great question. So a few things that you could do. There is something that we do like within our strategy that is both valid, like the process of basically validating ideas to see if they're actually worth it. Now, this process of validation, like caveat here, is that it depends also on your goals. Right now, we know that we don't care about vanity metrics and getting you like viral and being like becoming a celebrity. That's not what you want. We are optimizing for lead generation and client acquisition. That's bottom line, the goal. Based on that, the number one most important thing will be like the SEO aspect, because we know that if we create a video, six months, 12 months, 24 months later down the line, they will still attract the type of audience that we want to attract. So to answer your question, let's say like that, a how to create a high converting video ad. By the way, that was like a big idea. That's not necessarily the title. So that is also something important to have in mind as well. Sometimes we first need to come up with a big idea that we know for a fact because of the research that we have done that is appealing to our target audience. And then we try to use in tools, for example, as BidIQ to body Google Trends, try to find like what is going to be that target keyword that uh, has the best chances for us to get discovered. You know what I mean? So actually, yeah. let's do the, the example right now. Let's see if that is a high converting video ad could be like a right keyword. So this is this super low. I don't like this, but we have our suggestions here. So video ads, let's see. This is too high the competition. I wouldn't like it. I'll probably go for something that has at least 5,000, 10,000 uh, monthly like search volume and competition, probably like anything below 15, honestly. But I prefer like high search volume because that's just our opportunity to capture people that might be interested in that video topic, right? So other example that we could try is how to create. This too low in search volume. This low again, let's see. This one is better. I like video marketing as a keyword. So we'll need to find like a way to kind of like unite that video marketing keyword that we find that is a good one with how to create a high converting like video ad. 
So you will probably, and that's the thing. You usually like select first the bit idea, and then you start with the process of finding what is that specific target keyword that is going to make sense for us to to put in the title. So it could be probably something like how to create a video marketing strategy or how to properly do video marketing or how to do a high converting video ad and under parentheses, video marketing. So you have to play around a little bit with that. Also, something that you could do, there is a custom that is called like front loading keywords. Basically, that means putting the main keyword at the beginning of the title because that gives to the algorithm more context and more information about what is your specific topic about. So. If we know that video marketing is a good keyword, we also know that it's probably something relevant to your specific ICP. You could do like a title like this one, video marketing, how to create a high converting video ad. And this just makes sense as, as title, because even though this, this is specific like title is not a, does not have like a high search volume as we were seeing previously, this video marketing does. And this is still relevant for your specific ICP. So we are attracting the traffic and getting like that SEO aspect with this. And we are playing around with the angle and talking more directly to the audience with the second part of the of the formula of the title. And that is also something that we suggest doing like that is combining for the titles, not only the SEO aspect, but also like the clickbait aspect. With clickbait, I just mean like that aspect that is going to talk directly to your audience. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So that is an example as well, something that you could do there. But anyway, I think that we actually got deviated from the actually like channel foundations again. But yeah, we review basically for your channel, like the banner, the name of the channel, like in particular, specifically, then the about me section, then the homepage trailer, then the single channel, like playlists for the like sections of your homepage section. Then what else? Do you think the ad or the channel, like, my app is like app for Basha. Do you think that plays a role at any by any chance? Like if I were to call it like ads, like animated videos or something, would that make a get in results? Uh, for the name of the channel? Yeah, not not the name, but you see the like see the the, the tag basically. This. Yeah. But yeah, actually, like in my case, I took like this one, YouTube Organic Marketing. So you could try with something like that. Actually, that is also that is, that serves like a secondary purpose. I don't think that this applies that much for like SEO purposes, but it's more if you want to do kind of like this strategy that is kind of like outbound traffic. And what I mean by this is that if you maybe have a virtual assistant that can start to comment on videos that is likely that your ICP is looking for, they will see your comment and they will see your name. And if it is something that is appealing to them, you're probably capture that traffic. And if you have all of your channel foundations in place and all of your YouTube videos, you'll capture qualified traffic. Yeah, something that you could try out. Besides that, I'll probably also recommend you one last thing is the community tab section. You currently don't have it. I think you may have to verify your account and the, is this community tab section. And it's basically just like the tab where YouTube allows you to do like this type of polls, image and text-based type of content. Uh, as if it was your normal Twitter. And what I'll do here is literally the content that you're posting on Twitter, the ones that is like text-based or image-based, I'll post it here. Especially if there are things that are more related to successful like client case studies, successful results, testimonials, and stuff like that. Just for people that are just looking uh, around from like looking in all of your channel, just discover that type of valuable content that they know that you your service works, right? So that is probably something that I'll do as well, the community tab section. So anyway, that is basically it for the channel foundations. If you apply this, bro, I guarantee you that you have already all of those foundations set to get start and to start implementing your strategy. So for this side of things on the channel foundations, do you have like any, any questions? All good so far. All good? Sounds great. Sounds great. Perfect. All of what we just saw is basically the channel foundations. This makes perfect sense. Now we get the way that we need to structure our YouTube channels if we want to see success with that YouTube channel. And now let's focus actually in the specific strategy. What are the type of videos that you need to produce? What are the type of video ideas? What is the process behind setting up a channel and posting videos that are going to deliver results? to generate inbound leads again for your business, grow your revenue, grow your profits. That is what we will be reviewing together in the next few minutes, so stay around. Now, let's get actually into the channel strategy. So for the channel strategy, we'll cover up a few things, bro. First of all, honestly, I think I'll recommend you like these target keywords to have them always in mind for 
probably 80, 90% of all of your video topics. The idea, my recommendation is that we always like come up with probably five to 10 keywords that are very relevant to your niche because that target keyword, if you have maybe background with a like media buying, all of that, you'll see that that target keyword is ultimately like your targeting for your audience. So if we can select the target keyword that we know for a fact that there's like an audience interested in that and that audience is specifically your ICP, the idea is that all of the content that we create have like that same target keyword in the titles. So coming up with a list of a few of those keywords will be really like very valuable to your strategy. What are some of those? Video marketing definitely is something that I will encourage you to, to like have in mind for your strategy. This one has like a good search volume and low competition. Also looking for like, let's see, B2B. Things that include in the title B2B. Or will you say that your clients are like B2B, like your space? Yeah, and the majority are usually B2B. So perfect. B2B will be a perfect target keyword as well. What else? SaaS. Yeah, SaaS will be absolutely great. This is uh, an amazing search volume. Competition is low. So definitely like a hot topic right now. Something that you can leverage. And also the other thing is that you know that all of these other keywords that you have here, uh, you can just play around with multiple variations, right? So probably for now, having in mind those three keywords will be valuable for your strategy. Remember that it is that you use them for the specific like topics that you create. So that'll be a recommendation as well. Besides that, there are like kind of like, what are the type of contents that you were planning to record? Like, yeah, definitely like the, the sales assets type of sort of where you actually have like the Google Doc, for example, and you're going and explaining uh, that. So that's sort of like one of the approaches. As we've mentioned before, we were talking about like sort of like how to create high converting video ads, sort of like yeah, like the broad, perhaps even potentially like the the process of perhaps like delegating part of that or like actually outsourcing the work, for example, or something like that. Sometimes people are interested in sort of how they could hire people from like Fiverr or Upwork to do that. So try to steal the traffic from there as well. So yeah, approach how to optimize your your landing page as well. That could sort of help too because um, it's a bit far even though we do landing pages but it's far from like the animated videos but part of like optimizing your landing page in your website is adding a video the same thing with optimizing your ad can, and even in your social media as well so there are like indirect ways to approach that i would say i love that and i totally agree i think those are actually great ideas and those ideas that you just mentioned for hook are primarily like this type of like nurturing content there are three types of content that we focus on and those type of content are going to appeal to different type of buyers. We have the now buyers, the soon buyers, and the later buyers. Now buyers are people that are already on your market looking for a solution for your specific service, ready to buy. Soon buyers are people that might be potentially looking for something like what you're offering, but aren't ready to buy yet. And later buyers are people that are kind of in your industry and maybe may become clients three, six, 12 months later down the line. Based on this, we create different, first of all, we have like a YouTube funnel to address the three type of buyers. And second of all, we are going to need to create three type of like content uh, variations to attract all of those type of buyers. By the way, if you are enjoying the video so far and you think that it is valuable, I have something even better for you right now. In the description, you will find a link to a free case study video that we did, breaking down how all of these strategies that we are explaining in this live audit call were applied to multiple, multiple of our clients and how they got amazing results for inbound lead generation, how certain of our clients are getting like 50, 60% of all of the leads that they generate for their six and seven figure business this is all from YouTube Organic alone. So if you might be interested in seeing this free case study video, in the description, you'll find it out. It's a free video, free case study. You will learn a lot from that video as well. So feel free to go ahead and check it out if you think that it will be valuable for you as well. Having said that, let's continue with the video. How can we approach this? The content that you just suggested are the nurturing content. This primarily addresses like the Zoom buyers. So people that are kind of like aware of solutions like yours about animated videos, about BSLs, and they are already starting to look about things related to that, right? So you are doing like how-to videos on, again, how to design a landing page as you mentioned, or how to do like a high converting ad type, like any type of content that is kind of like a how-to video that you are explaining something to someone. That is to address the Zoom buyers, and it's definitely like a powerful way of content. Other one that I would like to touch on more like down that due to funnel is the converting content. The converting content is going to be primarily like client case studies 
So not the case studies that we were talking about that are from these massive companies that Apple and Google, but it's more like personal case studies. So how I help this company that is my client generate additional whatever in MRR with my VSL, something along those lines that is very clear that what you're doing on the video is just demonstrating your expertise, showing how you got results and just talking about your offer in general, right? Of course, providing value, but it's primarily to convert people that just want to know if your stuff works so that they can move forward. Another type of like that conversion content is, for example, these like client interviews. So rather than just a video testimonial, if you have like a client which you are going to be able to record like an interview, that is great for converting content that raises the level of certainty like a lot. And also the good thing is that since you know, Farouk, that like all of the content that you post is going to continue there forever, you can do certain of these type of like client interviews, case studies that are a little bit more boring at the beginning. And after that, you just focus on, on nurturing content and brand awareness content because it's still like all of the people that are entering your content ecosystem are going to be able to go back and binge watch your uh, converting content. So that is something to have in mind. So I just mentioned like the thing about the conversion content, the nurturing content, and for the general awareness content, what I recommend to do, brother, is to select topics that are like, as you were mentioning previously, far away, maybe the main offer that you do, but it still will allow you to kind of like create demand. So people that in the future might become your clients, you can record topics maybe that are, I was actually before this call, uh, looking for some people in your niche. But definitely, I think there's plenty of content that you can record with like this wide appeal. Probably, for example, these case studies from what are some examples that you think or topics that you think will be like for wide appeal? People that are in the like B2B SaaS, but it's something that a lot of people will be interested in. Do you have like any ideas? Of specific content creators, you said? Or no, just... more rather like topics. For example, how to, I don't know, how to build a SaaS that is super broad, stuff like that. Usually it's related to, it could be related to sort of like actually generating leads for uh, well, SaaS, actually getting results for SaaS or closing more deals with SaaS. You know? So yeah, it could be related to, to like sales assets, you know, that how you can sort of leverage sales assets. The exact keywords, as you mentioned, like it would have to do like research on that, but sort of we already have an idea. Like a lot of people, they're building SaaS companies, but they want to actually be able to see more results. And so this is where we can kind of talk. I have the expertise to actually talk about how you can get results and then squeeze in, as we mentioned, indirectly sort of how you, videos can sort of help further help you attain these results. A hundred percent. Just to clarify, Farouk, probably those video ideas that we just talked about are going to be more like nurturing content because even though lead generation may seem like a broad topic, if you really think about it, someone that is in the B2B SaaS world and that is looking for a lead generation video that lead generation video is more like a how-to video. So it's a very like specific thing. Usually when it comes to like broad type of topics that are for creating demand and that are for brand awareness are more like, this just like a, an example out of the top of my head, but how to get rich with uh, SaaS companies or how to build a no-code no code SaaS, stuff like that, that is very, very type, like very broad type of content. So that's basically the three type of content. And even though for your specific case, since we are not uh, looking for like virality and getting you a lot of uh, a lot of views, I will primarily just focus more on the nurturing content, the conversion content, and sometimes just other uh, brand awareness content to get more people into like your content ecosystem overall. And that's kind of like its own a uh, like flywheel, if you will. So yeah, does that make sense for the types of content? That's right. Perfect. Love, love all this, man. A lot of value here. So appreciate that. Sounds great, my man. Absolutely. Definitely my pleasure. Also, the last thing to have in mind, Farouk, is actually when it comes to like the YouTube funnels. What is usually like your funnel when it comes to like your content strategy, Twitter, and other platforms? Usually Twitter, it's either like two men. They go to my landing page, either book a call through there or they actually like uh, DM me to actually like sort of communicate before they actually book a call. But they definitely check the website first. Well, so yeah, but I don't know how the approach would be here on YouTube, I guess, since they technically, I guess it would just be directly booking calls since you can't really talk on YouTube. Yeah, that is a, that is a great point. So that's kind of like one of the quote unquote disadvantages when it comes to YouTube for that you cannot talk directly with them, like via DMs, that that is actually something great to kind of like build that relationship and a little bit of trust within those DMs. 
but you have like other options when it comes to the YouTube funnel. So actually I posted like a Twitter video a few days ago regarding this, and this is going to be like my recommendation specifically for YouTube. If you probably already read the book from Alex Ramosi about like 100 million leads, dollar leads, there's basically different type of offerings or ways that you can ask to your audience about something. My recommendation when it comes to specifically YouTube is doing integrated type of advertisement and that is indirect. What does that mean? Integrated means that in all of your videos, you're going to be doing a call to action to your quote unquote offer, but indirect means that you don't do like the call to action directly to your offer. Hey, go to my appointment booking funnel, but rather to a sales asset a sales asset or a lead magnet that is something that solves a very specific type of problem from your audience. It could be probably something simple, a checklist or a case study video or a SOP, whatever it might be, something that solves a specific problem from your audience. And inside that lead magnet or, or sales asset, you'll bring awareness to your offer. Let's say if you solve this problem, it is very likely that now you need something else that, are, that is related to my offer. I actually, I'm Farouk, I'm actually the founder of Dry Dessert. So if you might be interested in these type of services, go to this website to book a call directly with me and you provide a lot of social proof. Do you know how this works? You post a YouTube video. In all of your YouTube videos, you do a call to action to additional value for your audience to receive from you. And in that additional value that is more private, that is in that lead magnet or sales asset, is where you have your call to action to specifically your appointment book funnel. As Alex says, it's more about like giving in public and selling in private, and also multiple layers of things that you are doing with this funnel. First, of course, the lead magnet, when you're giving it away, you have like an opt-in. So you actually capture the email of that person. Second of all, the people that are looking for that opt-in, you know that they already are like engaged leads. So you're identifying if your lead magnet, if your content, is actually resonating with your specific ICP, with your specific target audience. Besides that, multiple things that will happen with this funnel. The people that receive the lead magnet and are directly interested about your offer and are now buyers, so they are going to go to your website, read your case studies, testimonials, all of that, and book a call directly. So awesome, I guess you have your pre-sales call sequences for warming them up, and then the sales calls when you close them. Now, the people that don't book like a call right away, you have their emails, so you put them in a sequence of emails, probably anywhere between four to six, I will say, in the span of a few weeks. It could be anywhere between three to five weeks in which you put them in a sequence. And you send them emails about more of the results that you have gotten for your clients, handling objections, showing the benefits of your service, and just things that for them, ward them up too. And with all of those emails, you're of course doing a call to action again, to book a call with you directly. So the people that are no buyers, you capture them directly with the lead magnet when they book a call, when they like saw that additional value and book a call. And the people that are soon buyers, you also capture them because you ward them up with the email sequences and then book them into a call as well. So that's my recommendation when it comes to the YouTube funnel. Beautiful, man. I'm actually excited to, now, now that it's all clear, I'm excited to actually put this into place and actually like uh, execute on all this. Appreciate this a lot, man. Absolutely, my man. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Honestly, this was an awesome session. I really enjoyed this lab audit call with you directly. I truly hope that you got a lot of value from seeing like the behind the scenes on the specific optimizations that you can actually do on your channel to see the type of results that you're probably trying to achieve. So having said that, in the next few seconds, I'll be suggesting to you another video about YouTube marketing that I think will be extremely valuable for you as well. So I invite you to watch that video right now. Also, I invite you to subscribe so that we stay connected. But anyway, having said that, I'll see you on the other video. It was a pleasure to have you here. Bye-bye. See you there.